in the front of the camera here in a minute. I see it's two o'clock. So I'll let Kim put us to record. Just let her do that and then we'll start. Are we recording, Kim? It doesn't look like we, we are. are. It, it, it's recording on my end, yeah. Oh, it is, okay. Okay, good afternoon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to RBCM at Outside. Um, uh, my name is Liz Crocker. I'm a learning program developer on the learning team here at the Royal BC Museum. I am not live outside today. I'm actually at the museum, and I'm in our distance learning room here on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. And um, the program today is, is coming to you, uh, for, well, it's, with, it's from here, but we're also gonna be uh, talking with Athena George at Saturna Island which is on the part of the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve. Um, but before we do, I'm just going to just let you know that this, this program, RBCM Outside, if you haven't watched before, we do record the programs so you can watch them later. Um, actually, I'll put that link in the chat window a little bit later. We can't see or hear you. You can just see and hear us. But so if you have comments or questions, please type them into the chat window. Usually the RBCM Outside program is about 30 minutes long. Where this one's going to be a little longer because it's a special special program. We've got a little bit further to go. Um, so we're going to go on an interpretive walk with Athena. And it's really, we're, we're impartially land-based whale watching today, which is um, a great way to see whales if you're lucky enough to walk along somewhere where whales are swimming past. Um, and I just want to make sure I've got everything there. Um, yeah, so... Um, if you have any comments, questions, you can put them in there as we're going along, but there will be a point during the program where we'll stop and Athena um, will be able to take some, some longer questions if, if there's any. So, um, I, lost the voice I think <laughs> Athena, if you're ready, we'll pop you in front of the camera. I think your video is still your spotlighted. There you are. So, Here I am. Uh, Athena George, I'm gonna let you take Hi. away and introduce yourself and let us know what we're gonna be doing this afternoon. And remember folks, we are live outside. Occasionally there's glitches. So if we freeze up a little bit, we'll just repeat something. We'll just, we'll go back to it. So, but right now you're coming in loud and clear. Hi, <laughs> Wonderful. <Athena. laughs> Hi. Well, hello, bonjour, and welcome to Gulf Islands National Park Reserve. This is the homelands of the Coast Salish peoples. I'm part of the Parks Canada team. I work here at Gulf Islands National Park Reserve and my name is Athena. I am so happy that Liz has got me outside doing this program because because of COVID, I haven't been able to do any guided walks this summer. So this is really a special treat. So thanks Liz and thanks Royal BC Museum. Thank you. I also need to, yeah, I also need to thank my behind the scenes team. There's Julia, she's doing the camera. Say hi, Julia. Hi, and there's Robin behind her. And Robin is going to be like making sure no park visitors end, end up accidentally in a streaming video. <laughs> we also have a Rachel over in Vancouver. She's going to be on the chat and she can answer questions as we go along. Um, it's going to be a fun program. We are going to stop at three different places along the way. We're going to talk to a young research student and peek in a little community museum. Here in, at East Point at Mount Saturna Island. Now Saturna Island lies between Vancouver on the mainland and Victoria on Vancouver Island. So we're at the eastern tip of Saturna in the National Park Reserve, and it is a great place to see whales. I often see humpbacks and uh, different types of killer whales, but today I'm gonna focus my program on the southern resident killer whales. Now, I don't know who you are behind the, this screen there, so you might be marine, all marine biologists or not know much about whales, so I just wanna make sure you know what we're talking about. This beautiful black and white creature, big dorsal fin. I'm talking about with the southern resident killer whales, it's a unique community of salmon eating whales. There's only 72 left in the wild and they are endangered. So they don't interbreed with other whales. We really don't want them to disappear forever. When we walk along, we're gonna stop at three spots and we're gonna look at our past our current and our future relationship with these southern resident killer whales. Because in the past, we saw them as our enemies and then we saw them as our idols. And I'm hoping now that we look at them more like family that we need to take care of. So we're gonna head out on this trail. Come on uh, along uh, with me. Athena, yeah, can, you, go, can you hear me? 
Yes. What's that? I was just thinking, as you're walking, what should folks be looking for out on the water? To if they oh, if let's, look oh for yeah, let's do it. Let's do a scan first, so you can see where we are. It, so it, well, you're you're going to be looking for dorsal fins if there are any whales out there or blows. Often I hear whales before I see them. So you're looking down the south right now, the south end of Boundary Pass. And if you were to follow that out, you'd be out at the Pacific Ocean. And then right across here, this is where we've been looking as we started the program. This is straight across the United States. So this, this pass divides Washington State on that side for British Columbia, Canada on this side. If you go along a bit farther, you'll see if you exited out the north of Boundary Pass, you would be heading over to Vancouver in the Strait of Georgia. And a lot of ships from all over the world use this pass and a lot of whales do too. Thank all right, you. let's let's head Thank on to the next spot. All right. Well, it's a little choppy right now, which sometimes happens when we're when we're moving. Um, we did a test this morning and it was quite clear. So I'm, I'm um, hopeful that once she gets to the next spot, stop, it's going to be a little clearer. <laughs> How's that, Liz? Is it better now that I've stopped? It's getting better. If once Robin stays still there. Okay, Julie, behind the camera. There we go, that's better. There we Great. go. So at this first stop, I'm gonna talk about our past relationship with Southern resident killer whales, especially because right here at this spot, I don't know if you can see right behind me here where the sandstone comes right close to the ocean. This is the site of a historic event that changed our attitudes towards Southern resident killer whales um, forever. It was the capture of Moby Doll. But before I show you some archival photos and tell the story, I need to get your, Mindset back into 1964. In 1964, we saw killer whales as our enemies. They, if, if they were out to get us, you know, if we fell in the water, they would eat us. People in boats stand on the land and here would shoot at them. And we didn't see them as different types of killer whales at all. They were all one type and they were all scary. So put your mind back to that time, 1964, Murray Newman at the Vancouver Aquarium wanted to make a life-size sculpture of an orca. So he hired a fellow, Samuel Burrich, a sculptor and a fisherman, to capture and kill a whale so they could measure it and make that sculpture perfect. And then they were gonna use the parts of the whale for research. Um, so I have some photos that, were, that Liz, we can switch to here that I have them uh, here too, so I can follow along. Yeah, and we'll just see, Kim, we might wanna change this. We'll see, hopefully that's, is that looking good, Kim? I'm just gonna get it on the actual slide. I think once you're on full slideshow, there we go, we got it. Okay, so we're on the right slide, Athena, with the- Wonderful. Slide. So these are, these are photos that the Vancouver Aquarium gave me permission to use in my programs out here at East Point because this is such an important spot to my relationship with killer whales. So the first one is um, them setting up camp capture the whale. They have a little orca flag there. You see if you follow down the trail on the right there's their camp. And then if you look right off the top of the flag on the shore there's a little harpoon. So they set up in May 22nd and this they picked this spot because orcas come in very close here because the shore drops off it's very steep. It's deep. So we can have the next photo. Okay. There it is. The next one is the same place we're standing right now, but from a boat. And up on the bluff, there's an old lighthouse building that's gone, but that tower, we're gonna see when we walk to the top, it's still the lighthouse. If you go down the shore, you'll see somebody standing on the shore. That's right about where I'm standing right now. And then there's somebody at the shore with the um, harpoon. So that they, um, they waited and waited, weeks and weeks went by and no orcas went by. And they were eventually ready to give up. And on July 16th, the day they were packing up, in the morning, they heard that classic sound of a dorsal, of a blow from an orca. And they ran to the shore. You can change the photo now to the next one. Yeah, so it's the fellow with the harpoon. 
the fellow with the harpoon. And they aimed and they shot and they actually hit a small orca. They weren't really even expecting to. It was kind of a surprise. So everybody on shore said, don't go out there, but because they'll kill you if you go out there. But Joe Bauer, one of the guys that was here, a photographer and a fisherman, he went out in a little dinghy. And what he saw were not kind of crazed killers, but he saw the other orcas helping to lift this young injured one up to the surface to breathe. So he phoned Murray Newman back in Vancouver and said, well, you better come here and see what we should do about this. So you can go on to the next photo. Yeah, so this is the photo of the whale harpooned. Yeah, these are very sad. And I, I mean, I feel we share sad stories about the past to learn from them. And they show us where we've changed. So this little whale was harpooned. It was, um, then they, they took it behind a boat for many, many hours, very gently over to Vancouver. It was still alive. Its family followed it. And we know now that Southern residents, their mothers are always with them. So its mother was certainly following it. You can go to the, the last photo there. Yeah, it's up. So they put it in dry docks over in Vancouver. And this is when our relationship began to change with killer whales. They, they dropped to microphone, CBC did in the water, and they could hear the call of the orca around the world. When they opened the gates so people could see this little uh, whale, they um, 20,000 people came, the same amount that came to see the beetles. So they discovered it was gentle, curious, and it ate fish. You can see that on its skin though, on that picture, it doesn't look very good. It's got sort of a uh, like circular yeah. sore. So it, it, they weren't sure exactly why, but it did pass away. So it's very sad. They had had a competition to name it. They named it Moby Doll. But when it died, they, um, they, uh, they realized it was a male. Mm -hmm. So we can, you can switch back to me now. Yeah, that is a very disturbing. Those are disturbing photos, but thanks for sharing those. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to say, I forgot to say at the beginning that when I talk about killer whales, I kind of switch back and forth between orca and killer whale. It's just my age. When I was younger, we all called them killer whales. Now we're switching to orcas. So I'm meaning the same thing when I'm using both those words. So when that happened, after Moby Doll, people realized, oh, a lot of people want to come and see the whales. So they changed from being our enemies to be kind of like rock stars where people could make money from them. We started to idolize them. And um, between 55 and 60 Southern residents were captured and shipped all over to aquariums. It's a complicated story because when I was young in Victoria, I did go to the sea, sea land of the Pacific and see the orcas there. And at the time, I didn't think there was much wrong with that. But now we know so much more. Yeah, so, I grew up with um, Scanna at the Vancouver Aquarium. It's what everybody. Yeah, I remember they used to say, yeah. if the orca splashed you, it was good luck. That's right. So they taught them to squirt to water at the audience out of their mouth. And, yeah. and maybe that's where my love of orcas came from, but it's maybe not a good place for it to come from a captive yeah. whale. That's where a lot we're of gonna head, We're going to head now up the hill. And at the top of the hill, there's a young research student um, from the Saturna Island Marine Research and Education Society, Simrez. She's going to talk a bit about her summer out here watching for whales. Um, so we're, we're ready to head out. Okay. And while Lefine is catching her breath at the top of the hill, I think Julia will maybe give us a close in on some of her equipment. And I'll ask Rachel, because I didn't write it down, if you can put in um, the name of that group. Was it Saturna Island something? Oh, there it is. Thank you, Rachel. So Rachel's put in, um, if you want to learn more about the Saturna Island Marine Research and Education Society, there's a great link there. Um, I'm sure Kim's going to pop it into Facebook. And as well, we've also put links from Parks Canada website um, for more information on Southern resident killer whales. There's some really fantastic resources in there. Um, I think there's a video as well. Oh, we're freezing a little bit, but that's to be expected when you're moving a bit. Boy, it's dry. You can tell there hasn't been much rain. It's that summer drought we have here. You now you've frozen completely, but that's okay. Get in your position, Athena, and um, I'm sure you're gonna pop back in. Otherwise, I can do a little tap dance here. Okay, now we're moving again. It's still fuzzy. I think it's just going to be fuzzy till you get in position. 
There we go. I can see, um, I think it's Lucy at the top of the hill. So she's been there all summer. She's going to tell us a bit about the research she's been doing. What a fantastic place to do your summer research. Wow. Quite fuzzy here. So as soon as you can, Robin, maybe if you can just hold still as, as you're six feet apart from, from her and then just get still so we can see. Yeah, we're frozen. Can you hear us? Bear with us, everybody. This is the fun of being live outside. Can you hear us, Athena? We're frozen still, Robin. Okay. Time to tap dance, Liz. I know, time to tap dance. We didn't have any trouble at this spot this morning. It's interesting. See us? There we go. There she is. Yay. Okay. okay, now that's good. Great, we can see you oh. just fine. And uh, we'll just get Robin to stand still. Perfect. Hello. Yeah, this is, this is Lucy. She's going to introduce herself. My master's research on cetacean distribution in boundary parks. So uh, this has been my um, office for the last three months, and over the last seventy odd days, I've had whales of some sort, either orcas or humpbacks, um, over fifty percent of the time. Uh, what I found is that June was a really good month for the humpbacks. Uh, July was the um, best month for the southern residents and so far August has been really good for the transient or fixed population yeah can you repeat that last line Lucy what did you uh, about August yeah yeah yes. so August uh, has been really good for the transient or the big orca population. The transient orcas oh, okay yeah wow so what are you using there what's your what's your main equipment I see a spotting scope uh, so this is a big camera, well, a big okay. lens at least. Um, so that's for, yeah, like seeing, like we can see humpbacks from like over 10 kilometers away, although not in much detail. Um, and then also have a laser range finder, uh, which we can get at least distances of boats and how far away they are, but it's a bit tricky to get the distance. From that. Oh, okay. If they get too close to the orcas, do you report that? Yeah, and I haven't really seen that yet this year, which has been really good. Um, yeah, so, but I would definitely report it. So what, can I ask, what's been your most amazing orca day this summer? Ooh, um, well, I guess the first time that I saw J-Pod was pretty incredible. Uh, it was early in the morning, we just set up, and then all of a sudden they were coming. So they came from this direction, and they just passed. It took an hour to pass us to go... Um, head down towards the Salmon Islands. And there were some were really close and some were really far and they were breaching and it was just, oh. yeah, pretty and amazing. There were no boats. Oh, so <laughs> beautiful. And uh, yeah, that was just, it was incredible. And, and just for folks that don't know, can you just explain what you mean by J-Pod? Oh, J-Pod. So that's um, one of the, uh, the pods of the Southern Residents. So there's the J-Pod, K-Pod and L-Pod. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, amazing. Yeah. Thank, yeah. thank you, Lucy. Yeah, thank I, it's a pretty nice job you got here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the CIMRES, the Turn Island Marine Research Education Society, it's a mouthful, that. Oh, yeah. um, we do partner a lot of projects with Parks Canada, and we have a little, they have their little research station right here in the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve. So that's where we see a space at it. Are there any other questions before we head on? Yes, I see. A question has just come in. How many whales are in J, K, and L? That's from Pamela Wallace. Um, well, I think there's 22 in J, pod. Yeah, 32 in L. Okay. And the rest. 17 in K. Okay. You guys can do the math. <laughs> yeah, that's the math. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it adds up. And, you know, they discovered after um, they listened to the old recordings of Moby Doll, the whale I was telling you about, that it was one of the J, pod members. The one that oh. uh, recording. Okay. Oh, hey, maybe look at the lighthouse for a minute before. Thank you, Lucy. No worries. Oh, Athena, one more quick question. Yep. Okay. Back uh, to Lucy. Do they always stay together? The pods. I think that's what they mean. Do they do they always stay in their pods? Like, does J stay separate from K and L or? 
I believe in general they do, but there's definitely one individual that's kind of, is it Onyx, has sort of switched pods a few yeah. times, and then sometimes, so the, we saw J pod once, and we saw K and L pod. I don't think it was the full amount of them, so they do travel together, and sometimes they're apart. Yeah. But sometimes in general, they used to come together for super pods. Yeah. But they yeah. all come together, I guess they would have a little ceremony when they met, they kind of face each other, and then together, and um, they haven't been coming here in the Salish Sea and doing that as much lately. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed, though. I know. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, Thanks, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy. Right, no well, a, quick, a, quick, a quick look at the tower. So it was built in 1949. It's highly functional lighthouse. It's still going. And often there's a bald eagle at the top. But uh, the bald eagle's not there today. Well. We're right. just going to hike a little tiny bit. Yep. Is there no, a question? I, say that I recognize it from the slide you showed us. Yeah, that's right. It's still here. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go a little bit down the hill, and I'm going to talk a bit about the current situation for the southern residents. Um, so we'll come oh. on down. Look at those clouds are coming in. I think our weather is about to change. Yeah, it gets a little choppy when you're moving. But for those folks, you've ne if you've never been to Saturna Island, hopefully you're getting a little bit of a sense of what it's like. And if you have been there, a little return to Saturna. Oh, look at a little close up on a Gary Oak leaf. Look at that. It's really distinct, those Southern Gulf Island ecosystems, those rocky bluffs and, oh, we're gonna be right under the tree. Nice. <laughs> okay. So are we are we steady now, Liz? Yep, we're good now. We got a good signal. Isn't that yep. amazing? Yeah, I can talk to you from wherever you are in the world. That's just fantastic. Don't jinx it. So as I <laughs> as I said before, I'm going to stop at three spots and talk about our changing relationship with the southern residents. So they went from enemies to being our idols. I think we're still a little bit in that now. I mean, we we want to get close to them. We really love them. Um, but they are facing some difficulties. And I just wanted to share the story of a, one of J-Pod members. Can you see this? Yes. This is J-16 Slick. And this photo was taken by Miles Ritter right here at East Point from that cliff top there a while back, I think about 10 years ago. Now, Slick's seen a lot of changes in our oceans. And her story is a little sad. Sorry, I'm having two sad stories here, Moby Doll and Slick. But I promise you, when we get to the next one, next stop, it will be happier. But Slick's um, only grandson, Sonic, J52, which means he's the 52nd member of J-Pod to be identified. And uh, her offspring, her youngest offspring, her daughter, Scarlet, J50, both died before they were four. Now, life is tough for orca calves usually, but now there's some special uh, difficulties they're facing. They're, um, there's three things that are really facing them. There's a shortage of their favorite food, salmon, especially Chinook salmon. And the salmon that they are getting is got contaminants in it. And then there's been a lot of disturbance from boats. The noise from the boats affects their echolocation where they find their fish. And um, just boats in the water prevent them from hunting. So we know what the we know what the um, the problems are. So we're working to address it. All right, and I'm gonna just uh, looks like I've lost Lucy here. She's she's not I mean Lucy, <laughs> Julia. We, she's just some poor park visitors have just been stopped, stopped yeah, can, from their little walk. I can I can hear them in the background, but you're. I mic know we just don't want them to accidentally be on camera. So but you're, you're all right. So we're we're gonna head on out to the point now. So come on along. Okay. And I see um, Kim has put a little link in there to our upcoming, about our upcoming exhibition at the Royal BC Museum about orcas. Thanks, Kim. And then somebody else has recommended a book, Listening to Whales by Alexandra Morton. Oh, I really love her stuff. I didn't know she had that book. Thanks for that. That was from Mike. Thank you, Mike. 
And we're frozen again. Well, we'll, we'll let her get into position there. Oh. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just walking along. Yeah, I think if you want us to look there, you'll have to stand still, Julia. But I think she's walking out to the to the building now. So it's 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 really interesting um, when we do these programs. Sometimes the reception is better than other times, and it was much clearer this morning, even when walking. However, it's good once she's in place, standing there. So yes, and we're trying not to get park visitors on camera. This might have been where we can see Mount Baker from, but I think maybe it might be a bit too cloudy in the distance now. We'll find out when Athena gets into position. Some more of that sandstone rocks. I bet it gets windy out on this point. Yeah, I can hear a little bit of wind. We're still okay, Liz. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. And we'll wait, let Robin get, or Julia get still there. While Julia's getting ready, just passing on a question from Facebook. Allie asks, should we stop buying or eating Chinook to help the orca? Um, well, I think check the Ocean Wise sea, Sustainable Seafood Guide, and they, that'll give you... Um, pretty good ideas of what to decide to choose for your seafood choices. Yeah, I see those. Um, sometimes you can get little cards of that, you know, they hand out. Yeah, and, and they have a lot of good things on the website too. Yeah. to tell you yeah. which fish. Yeah. So and we're going to give a little, um, a little uh, panorama here to show you where we are. Fantastic. So we've come down Boundary Pass. And straight across is Orcas Island in the States. And then if you keep going, you can see just the top of Mount Baker peeking very majestically out of it. Julia was going to, can you point at it, Julia? Yeah. You stay still, Julia, and then point where Baker is. We'll see if we can, oh, okay. I'm not. Can you see it? Maybe some of our keen-eyed viewers with a better resolution at home. <laughs> okay. Out there somewhere. Thanks, Julie. Out there somewhere. Trust <laughs> us, it's there. And I then we're going to keep going along. And this little building is called the Fog Alarm Building. It's one of the, uh, it's built in 1939. It used to house the um, engine for the fog alarm, that engine that made that ba wah noise to warn people away from the, the when it was foggy, away from the rocks. And we're going to get a peek in there in a minute. But keep going around. You see the end of the point over there? Somebody standing out there. That's super important historical place because I got married there. <laughs> and that then if you, if you keep going along you'll see right over there that would be if you were going to catch a ferry from vancouver to vancouver island swasson is right over there okay so i promised you some happy news well these waters that you just saw are now have some uh southern resident killer rec recovery measures happening so maybe if you can show me the maps yep. um uh, liz then we can have a look at them yep Pull it up here. And okay, I've got the first map up Southern Resident Killer Whale Sanctuary Zones and Fishing Closures. Yeah, you'll see there that there's Saturna Island on the right, and that little red bit around there wraps right around East Point where we're standing right now. And that is a interim sanctuary zone for Southern residents. There's no fishing or boating from June 1st to November 30th. So Parks Canada is taking action for the Southern residents, uh, working with Indigenous Partners, Fishing Oceans Canada, and Transport Canada for enforcement and science and education like I'm doing today. The big yellow patches, those are no recreational and commercial salmon fishing now on the south side of Saturna and Pender. So very large areas where we're leaving some fish and some space for the endangered southern resident killer whales. And it's just fantastic to see that um, these things are happening. So one more map. We'll flip to the next map. Yep, it's up. 
So I don't expect you to see all the little printing on here, but I just wanted to put this one here to show you the big gold area that wraps around Vancouver Island from Tofino wraps right up to Campbell River. That is now, um, everybody in there all year round has to stay 400 meters away from killer whales. And 400 meters is a long way. That's 30 school buses end to end. So we're giving them lots of space so that our, the boat engines don't disturb their, their fishing and the boats don't disturb them. And if you look down in the bottom part of the map, the uh, Strait of Juan de Fuca, you'll see there's more yellow, that's salmon fishing closures and that little bit of red right there at the bottom of the map is another interim sanctuary zone at Swisher Bank. So there's lots of really positive, uh, great things happening out there on the water. That's great. We're going to now go and, like I promised you, peek inside the little fog alarm building. Okay. We can't go all the way in because we lose reception. We're going to have a little look inside. Thanks, Athena. While we're walking, there's hellos here on Facebook from Switzerland and from Mexico watching today. Ooh. And I see somebody from Sydney. BC. Hi, Tina. <laughs> wow, so Switzerland and Mexico. That's so great. This little, um, this little building is protected by the Heritage Lighthouse Act. And inside of it, the Saturna Heritage Committee, which is a, a little um, group uh, of local residents, runs the small museum. But there's a surprise in here. And maybe Rachel will pop in a link for the Saturna Heritage. And she's also put a link in there for yeah. a, an animation about an interim, about interim sanctuary zones. Thanks, Rachel. Great, thanks. So this right here, uh, the Vancouver Aquarium decided the best place for Moby Doll Skull to rest was at East Point where he had been captured. So that story I told you at the beginning of our walk about the little orca, that was captured and changed our minds and hearts about killer whales. Uh, Julia. The newspaper articles from the Times. Athena. Sorry, we, we did lose you there. Oh. So if you can both stay still and try that again. We heard you uh, about that. Okay, back up a bit. Yeah, it's getting a little choppy in there. Did you, uh, did you actually, did you get to see Moby Doll's skull? Yes, we can still we can see it. It's a little fuzzy, but I understand Julia can't get too close. So yeah, yeah. I think that that like because building is so sturdy that the minute you go inside, you absolutely lose cell phone reception. So I think that it's just going to have to be a sneak peek for today. Yeah, we're going to go outside, and I'll just wrap up our little talk. Yeah, we're at about we're at two thirty-two, so you're doing great with timing. Oh, great. So um, I wanted to introduce one more whale. So uh, to end on a positive note. <laughs> and this, this is another photo by Miles Ritter who took, takes photos from shore back a while ago on Saturna here. And this is little, can you see it? Little K43 Saturna as a calf 10 years ago passing by East Point. She is named after Saturna Island. So she's dear to my heart because I'm a resident here. And the good news is, is that she is doing well. So 10 years later, she's doing all right. And we really need lots of females in this endangered population so they can have more calves so that we can, uh, that population can grow. And there's also, if you look on the news, there's a few Southern resident killer whales that are pregnant. So fingers crossed, everything works out for them in that way. And I wanna say, I was talking about our relationship to these Southern resident killer whales. And I, for many years, went into the schools and talked to kids about species at risk. I had an Indigenous partner with me, and she would talk, I would talk about the science and Parks Canada's angle, and she would talk about how the whales, and she was a Westanich person, local Indigenous person who spoke Sanchofen. She called the name of them was Kalfalamutsun, and she said that they were our relatives, and we had to treat them as such, like our family. So I try to imagine if little K43 was my niece, how would I, how would I want her life to go? Would I, I would want her to have lots of fish and there would be a healthy ocean for both her and for us humans. So I'm, um, that is the direction I'd love things to go. From, from the end, we saw them as enemies, then we've been, they're sort of rock star idols, and now as caring for them like family.
So I hope that you got a little taste of the Gulf Islands National Park Reserve and that if you haven't ever been here, maybe it can go on your bucket list. <laughs> um, but if you've been here, maybe you want to come again. So thanks very much for joining me for this little walk. And thanks to Liz and, and my behind the scenes crew, Rachel and Robin and Julia. I'm going to stay for a few questions, but just signing off. Goodbye. Au revoir. Your official goodbye. Thank this is my you. official goodbye, yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Athena. And I want to remind you, you wanted to just mention Mark Lear and Young's books. So I'm holding it up. Uh, yes. There's more about the Moby Doll story in here. Is that right? Yeah, that's a good read. And mm -hmm. I used it for some of my research, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, another good one. And we've had a number of recommendations in the chat as you've been going along. That's great. Yeah, thank you so much. That really did give us a, a nice little virtual taste of what it's, I mean, I re really do almost feel like I'm out there with you. Thank goodness. It I know, I wish I could bring you the smells of the dry <laughs> grass, the, the smell of the ocean and the, yeah. like the sound yeah. of the little waves. And, and you know, we didn't see, we didn't see whales today. Oh, this is something really important I wanted to add that I forgot. We didn't see whales today, but there are some things you can do to help Southern residents. And, and that is, um, shore-based whale watching. You can go on uh, the, the whaletrail.org and have a look and see uh, the spots along the coast where it's good to see whales if you live here or maybe visit. And download the Whale Report app so that if you do see a whale, you report it to the BC Cetacean Sighting Network. And that way they'll use that for science, research, and those reports go to the big ship captains that are coming through here so they know when whales are coming through. So those are two good things that I like listed. I put a link in there to the website for Gulf Islands National yes. Park Reserve. And there's some other good ideas for what you can do to help. Yeah, and we'll put that whale report app in there. Increasingly, there's so many um, citizen science initiatives where just regular folks out in nature, just outside in their own yard can report what they're seeing. And it does really add to the overall, you know, not all of it is scientific, but you get enough of them that are corroborated by scientists and it can be really valuable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. So any, any, just, any questions or are we ready uh, to? I'm just, I'm just seeing, I think maybe um, Kim, if you want, we can take it off. Um, Facebook. I don't see things. Da, 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 da. Um, oh, even though they're sitting on a couch in Winnipeg, they really enjoyed it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, and someone else is talking about iBird and iNature. And I wanted to say too, while everybody's still there, is um, watch our website for when the next RBCM out, outside is. The dates aren't on yet, but they will be up there soon. See when the next one's going to be. And again, I just want to thank Athena so much for this. It was just so um, informative and I see another little question here. Hang on, I've got one for you. Are you ready? Okay, yep, uh, try me. Why are the first year of a whale's life so difficult? You did mention uh, about that it's, it's a tough life for all of the young ones. But yeah, well, you think they're living out in a rough ocean. They're a small marine mammal. There's big waves. They've got to stay close to their mother at all time. It takes a lot of energy to swim at the, at the same speed as all the rest of their pod. Right. So they're just keeping up and they're... Um, it just tough, it is tougher tough yeah. little ones yeah they're, yeah, they're sometimes they even get lost from their mom every once in a while too just because of the big storms and things yeah and i wonder if the young ones it does their echolocation they're probably not as good at echolocation no as, they're on like, their mom's they're definitely on their mom's milk right right yeah, yeah. The, their, their point was you know if they're um if they're with their families wouldn't it be a little easier for them but no it's the same with all mammals when they're little it's just you know you're more vulnerable yeah, yeah. there's just more risks and dangers out there when you're little yeah, yeah. well thank you again athena thank you pleasure that okay was, and i hope you get back to work outside soon once we get yes well uh, you know you know check uh, the website the gulf islands website hopefully enough summer i'll be out doing programs here again yeah, um, but I, I am doing point duty just chatting to people. So I really like that. That's good. Well, I hope you get to talk to some real people soon. We're real. <laughs> you can't see. Yes. Okay. Thanks so okay, much. Bye, everybody. Bye.